We're here with Doug Fuller um, from the SEP team. Doug, uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, what's your title and, and where do you work within Red Hat? Uh, so my title is Principal Software Engineer, uh, and so I work on the SEP engineering team at Red Hat. Okay. And you're based uh, nearby here. That's right. Yeah, I live in Knoxville, Tennessee, uh, which is just a few miles away from here. Excellent. Excellent. And you're one of the speakers at today's uh, dojo. So mm -hmm. what will you be speaking about? Uh, well, I work on the CEF team, and so I'll be talking about the, the CEF project. And I'll be giving the audience a technical overview uh, of CEF. Uh, and we'll dive into some of the uh, implementation details, how, uh, how CEF works, uh, how it's deployed. Uh, and uh, what, I, what I really like talking about with audiences like this is how it's designed. I'm looking forward to that because uh, so far today, we've uh, seen that we have a really technical audience. And when we spoke earlier, you, you said that you have once worked for uh, Oak Ridge National Laboratories and that they were they are kind of using stuff quite a bit. Um, without revealing uh, too much, I mean, how how is SEP deployed in, in an environment like this? Uh, well, so t uh, oddly enough, not too much differently than it's deployed many other places. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, here, I th uh, the biggest usage of CEP I know within the lab uh, is uh, for bulk data storage uh, on their OpenStack clusters. They've been working on that uh, for several years now. I, I left uh, about four years ago and they had uh, started standing up OpenStack at that time. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that you were really excited about like explaining like how CEP is designed. I mean, can you get a little bit more into that? Like, like what, what are the parts that you think are really cool about Ceph? Uh, well, for example, uh, in, uh, in Ceph, we do all of our data storage without using a central directory server or metadata server to locate uh, storage within the system. Uh, if there's a piece of storage you need, uh, we call those storage objects. Uh, Ceph has a, a really unique and interesting way of uh, finding them within your storage cluster without having to rely on a central directory that serves as a single point of failure uh, or uh, creates uh, locking contention uh, between uh, clients. What was your professional slash personal journey to Ceph? Uh, well, so it turned out uh, here at Oak Ridge National Laboratory, the group that I worked in designed data storage systems for the fastest computers in the world. Uh, and uh, because those because uh, commercial systems like that didn't exist, uh, we relied on open source software to tie together commodity hardware in order to uh, deliver a, a storage systems uh, of scales that had never been built at the time. Uh, and uh, Ceph was one of the uh, architectures we looked into later on uh, to determine uh, how well it worked in these kinds of environments. During the study, I met some of the, the Ceph engineers on the project and. Uh, now, a few years later, that's my full-time job. It's kind of, that's a great story, uh, how, it, uh, how you got from point A to point B. Yes. Um, are there, obviously, very dedicated to stuff, are there other open source projects that you work with on a regular basis? Uh, so I'm a user of many open source projects, uh, but other than complaining about things and filing bugs, most of my time, uh, <laughs> most of my time contributing goes to stuff. Okay. Well, as you know, uh, yesterday marked our 15th anniversary for CentOS, and um, we've been asking everybody, um, when was the first time you used or were exposed to CentOS? Well, I can't remember the first time uh, I had ever used or been exposed to it, uh, but my first significant use of it would have been uh, around 2007 uh, when I uh, worked at Arizona State University. We deployed all of our uh, supercomputer clusters using CentOS, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we, uh, we ran it solidly uh, the entire time that I was there. One final question, kind of related to that. Um, you know, you had mentioned that you use it on your supercomputing, and I've seen CentOS being used on supercomputing platforms uh, around the world. What, what is it about CentOS and, and, and the RHEL ecosystem that do you think makes it attractive for supercomputing platforms? Uh, well, for uh, for one thing, the uh, the application and hardware compatibility make them really easy choices. Uh, it's very likely that uh, the server hardware that you get from your vendor will run uh, CentOS right out of the box. Uh, and uh, that means less time spent trying to uh, hack and adapt your, uh, your drivers or even your software packages mm -hmm. uh, in order to work well. Uh, on the operating system. Uh, so it, uh, it frees up uh, administrators' time to 
uh, handle the more unique issues that come with tightly coupled supercomputing. Uh, and uh, users generally have some experience with it as well. Well, Doug, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Brian.